truth is, we didn't know what a band was, you know, when we started doing this stuff. We didn't know what we were doing. Like, we were just literally just like, this is a sound we want to make. Let's go do it. Oh, people like it? Let's do it a bunch. Let's do it a lot more. For me, personally, how we went into this record, our mindset was obviously we wanted to blow wrongdoers out of the water. I think we really wanted to make something different and heavy and dark and driving and just like really, really outshine wrongdoers a lot and say like, you know, this, this band is a significant band and we still have a ton of life in us and we're here to stay. I'd say hit that open note a little bit harder. Me and John hit the shit out of it. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, okay. Polar Similar is basically something that we made up. Um, in a sense, like, I, I always kind of like the idea of rather than forcing something into a song, like finding a meaning or uh, and forcing it into lyrics or forcing it into a record title or any kind of really art piece. Like I, I like the idea of finding something that we like and we're drawn to somehow. Maybe we don't know what the reason is, but and then and then just applying meaning to that. I love that idea. I think that's it's to me the greatest way to to write lyrics, to think of song titles, to think of record titles or anything. It, I think it, it's really just meant to be open to interpretation to anyone. We, we like that in Norma Jean to, to write things a little bit open-ended so that anyone can take that and, and run with it. But that part needs. Are you serious? Let's do it. I mean, that sounds pretty cool. Yeah. That sounds cool. That's the climb. That's yeah. pedally for shit. Like that? Yeah. Oh. It's not really a note more than it is just a slide. Oh. Well, I always play no. Slide. Slide. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty good. Real quick. Um, God, let me try it. Sure. Here it comes. I think that he should do that. Oh, I think. Dude, the writing process for this album is totally different, as opposed to wrongdoers. I guess the best way to say it is, with this record, it's just pretty wide open. 
you can hear more influence from everyone that's in the band and it's just we're, we're doing more things that we've never done and basically it's a totally different vibe this record is a completely different thing This album has matured. Uh, it's it's different from the others because I feel like we're more comfortable with, with each other, and like it's not like us just coming in and like immediately writing because that's what it was for Wrongdoers. Like when me and John joined, we just like started writing. We have a musical chemistry, we friendship chemistry now that has, you know, evolved now since that record. We wrote that record together and now we've kind of figured out how to do that and what we wanted it to, to, to really make. If you, any of us have any kind of, if I have an idea, we're like, what if we do this, then we'll try it. And if we don't like it, then we try something else. Um, like I played... I kept having in my head like to play slide guitar on this record uh, and I was like I know maybe it sounds a little weird but just let me see if I can pull it off and, and it works and it's I mean one of my favorite parts on the record like if, if any sort of idea you have they're very good about just like yeah let's try it could be awesome. I don't write about anything that we don't know about. Um, one thing that, that Norma Jean has always consistently done is, is we write lyrics together. Uh, so you guys caught, caught, caught me with laptop. my uh, printer <laughs> that I always carry around with me. <laughs> um, no, I have to print out lyrics. Are you? Oh yeah, this sucker like works! Bob, Dude, what's going to come that? out? <laughs> the lyrics. The lyrics are going to come out. Dude, we have no idea what we're... Dude, if it's a picture of, of Jack Nicholson... We're out of here. Loaded up. We're out. <laughs> Pack up. I think in our lyrics we never have like it may be specific to us what it means but it's open for interpretation for what for what anybody needs to take from the song I think when every person in a band knows what the song is about that they're playing that they play it different
think of it is everything that you love about Norma Jean, just more of it. Like you like the heavy stuff, you, we got more of it. You like the sort of quieter stuff, we got more of it. You like the more just like melodic kind of thing, we, we got it. Like we, we really worked really hard and I don't think we, any of us could be more excited about it. Uh, I, there's certain parts on the record I just wish I could be there to see people's faces when they hear it the first time. You know, when you think about why we started playing music in the first place, it was just because we wanted to jam with our friends in a room. Like, it's really that simple. It's not, there's nothing deep about that, you know? Like, um, and so when you try to write a song for the first time, you, you're teaching yourself to, to do that. There's, you know, you can't go to school and learn how to write a song. You can't do that. You can't learn to do that. It's an art form. Um, you know, just as I always say, um, I think music is meant to be interpreted differently by everyone. You know, Jeff will show me so something he wrote on guitar, and I'll hear it totally different than he's trying to show it to me. Sometimes that can be really frustrating, actually, and, and not fun. <laughs> but it, it's all about working it out and figuring out what that song is trying to tell us to do, you know. And, and then by the, by the time we hear our record done, recorded, and we're listening to it for the first time, we do kind of get that feeling a little bit of like, oh, this is, this is what it, our record sounds like. It, it becomes brand new again, which is really cool and exciting. history there that all of us are, are mindful of um, and are very respectful of, but at the same time, we're trying to just keep pushing that. We don't want to just make, oh God, the aftermath part two. My name's Philip Ferris. Um, my friends call me Philly. Uh, even people that aren't my friends sometimes call me Philly. Uh, it's just something I got hit with when I was a teenager and it just sort of never went away. I 
started playing when I was probably 14 or so. Um, before that, was way into sports and boxing and that kind of stuff, and then uh, found the guitar and I never looked back. I saw this, uh, I was <clears throat> at a buddy's house, skateboarding buddy, and he played this VHS tape. Uh, it was a Nirvana Live thing, and at one point, Kurt Cobain just goes running, and he just dives through the drum set, and I was like, I gotta learn to play guitar. It didn't have anything to do with, like, actually playing the guitar. He just happened to be holding one when he dove through the drum set. In my mind, I was like, all right, yeah, I have to learn to play guitar now. And now I'm here, where they sat right there on that fireplace, and they recorded my favorite record ever here. It's kind of mind-boggling if you think about it too hard. <laughs> it's like, I don't know, it's just not something that I ever envisioned, you know, like, but now I'm here. It's pretty sweet. I say it all the time, but it's it's not necessarily meant to be a joke. Like, I really was just kind of raised in the woods by myself. <laughs> so, like, uh, I know how to, like, I've got a pretty steep, uh, upbringing in like roots music and uh, blues music uh, being from Louisiana and uh, so like I, I just somehow kind of know how to play all these weird instruments like the banjo and the mandolin and the uh, slide guitar and I can just if it's got strings on it I can fake it well enough I mean, being a pack of Durham, it's, it's amazing. There's just a, there's a vibe with the house and in the studio. Like, I don't know, when you're in the house alone, like, everybody's down in the studio. Like, and even when you're not alone, there's just, like, this creative slash kind of, like, eerie kind of vibe about the place and the sounds that you can get from just the pool room that you heard yesterday and just the live room in there like we're getting sounds that I've never been able to get in any facet of me recording records my whole life yeah just the kind of the isolation of the place I feel like is really bringing out a certain style certain vibe to like just the songs and everything like I feel like this place is really putting its influence into the record itself. And I couldn't think of a better place to record this record than here. Like, there's no other place this record could be recorded. This one just kind of came out of nowhere and it just, it just really lined up. I, um, I really think it was meant for us to be, to be here in this environment. Um, it's perfect for this record. 
Pachyderm has a history, and every studio has a history, but it's cool that they're, like, we, when we rolled up here, we drove, me and my assistant drove straight here, we rolled up, and we just rolled into this, came off the middle of nowhere rural road in, the, in some town I've never been to, into a freaking time capsule that I'm just imagining, you know, Kurt Cobain drove up and saw the same thing I'm seeing. The guys uh, throwing copper from live was done here. Uh, failure, like that's what's so cool about the place to know that we are sitting and eating in the same spots of like some of our art idols. Like In Utero is still one of my favorite records. I, I mean, I love all of Nirvana, but like In Utero is the record for me. And then uh, Comfort by Failure, like to know that those drum sounds and the guitar sounds all came out of that room. And the gear here, like this console is like one of six made. We've got vintage Neve preamps. We have everything we could have at just a moment's notice. And it helps me kind of put the sound that they're hearing together. Uh, and I have zero limitations. There have been so many great artists that have recorded here, and like, you know, of course Nirvana, and then one of my personal favorites as well as Nirvana is Failure. Failure's an amazing band. Like, you listen to records like that, and you can just, you know, those records have like a vibe, you know, and that's really what we want this record to have. And like, you know, now now that we've been in here tracking, I hear that live room where we tracked our drums. Like, you hear that on those records. Like, you hear that room. And I think that's really something we were trying to do, and we're really glad we're here, and it's pretty crazy to be able to do it in the same place as some dudes like those. <laughs> For this record specifically, we had put a lot of thought into the kind of feeling we wanted it to give people, and we wanted that to match lyrically and everything. We and. And I think being here at Pachyderm um, just just is like the you know icing on the cake, cherry on top of of what we you know the total vibe we wanted to accomplish, and it made it so much easier for us to do that. Um, even to you know like yeah, it is kind of plush. It's got some plush to it, but it does. It's like a very creepy old house feel to it. Um, that just happens to have an indoor pool, you know, which we recorded in right away, which was rad. Okay, now, just don't drop that shit in here. Pretty dog, don't drop that shit. It makes me nervous walking around. It's Billy. It's right here. There just isn't much of me way to fuck up right That's mine. Definitely, I mean, I, it wasn't even my idea to do it in the pool room, but as soon as we got in there and, like, started listening, like, that's where that part needed to be recorded. It's just, like, 
it's part of a song. I mean, people will see this and they will understand later, probably. Like, it's just like a, a very sharp contrast between that part and the song that follows it. And like, it was going for a vibe, and I think we nailed it on that. It's just, it needed to be really atmospheric and just like much. I don't really know how to describe it. Just, it had to be what it was in there. <laughs> like, whatever that was, that's what we were looking for. <laughs> I woke up to that that day. I was asleep. And I just was like laying in bed like, don't stop. <laughs> like, think of some more things to record in the pool room, please. While I lay in bed and, and just listen. I thought that was really cool. I just have always heard things like differently, I guess. And, I, and that, that can be said for everybody. But man, like when you're doing something and, and like, you know, with the blinds, and you would hit them, the older blinds, and they made the Star Wars sounds. And, you know, yelling at somebody from a different part of your house or, uh, you know, being near a window when you do something. I, I, those things are just sounds. And it's like my brain goes, oh, that was cool. Remember that. And then I'll be sitting there. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, yo, take a microphone and put it in a pitcher and put it near a pool and then crank it up and distort it. And that sound came out. And yeah, I mean, most of it, I'm just kind of flying by the seat of my pants. I can't even say anything. I just kind of go, uh, and I run off. And my assistant's looking at me like, what are you doing? But I think that is the beauty of making records where there's no rules. There's no, there's no software that can tell you to do that. To me, Wrongdoers is a transitional record. It isn't 
um, I think for us, we're always trying to make something that we think is monumental, that uh, says something that no one else is saying, or maybe somebody else is, but um, we want to say it different. Um, and this record, Polar Similar, to me, is that that true goal that we were trying to reach um, when, when we started doing that record. Second time working with Josh Barber. Yeah, um, yeah he's awesome. He knows the direction we want to go. Um, he sees what we want to do with this record, and I feel like he completely envisions it, and he's making those sounds happen that we want on the record. I want to come back to him for the next record. <laughs> yeah, he, I, th I think he just he gets he gets us as people and as musicians. <sighs> Takes one to know one. Dude, this kid at this part is so creepy. Do the talk voice. Look at the fucking hair. It's like a helmet. Well, on, on Wrongdoers, it was my first record with them. Like, I'd only experienced them out on the road or, like, on a bus. So uh, the relationship was kind of growing at that point, and I knew them uh, as we were doing things. Um, <clears throat> I kind of knew some of the guys from previous bands that they had been in and what to expect, but, like, the difference in this new record with Polar Similar is that uh, they are a complete form of what we started in Wrongdoers, and if not, even further from that. And uh, I kind of knew what, what to expect. It's just a, it was even a refresher to me hearing the demos and then doing it in the studio. It's a completely different beast. When you, when you hear it, you'll, you'll understand what has changed and what's different about it because it's just like all of our energy is, is tighter into this record than it was last time. I feel like it's... Like you've said, it, it has matured a lot, and you can hear that. I feel like this record really is heavier, and it really is more melodic, um, not in the sense that we forced anything. It's just a building bridge from what they've established over set, like six other records to now. Um, you know, it's, it's just being in the trenches for that long. They have refined a process that you can't do in a year, you know, it took three years to get here from wrongdoers. They've been through a lot and there's a lot of change and it's all good change, but it's kind of the breaking barrier of here we are, we made it through this and now that sound's being captured. Seven. 
Well, we were just listening to some of the what Jeff was doing in the pool room yeah. with all the reverb and stuff, and he had like we were just listening to one of the things he did. And it, was it was just creepy spooky. sounding. Yeah, super creepy sounding, and then and then I <clears throat> I was on my phone, and something in the background like reminded me of this thing that we were talking about six months ago. Jeff was telling us about these number stations that were like around. They were used the for the Cold War, War for to, spies. But uh, it's like these like creepy sounding like tones and stuff, and uh, something like happened in the background like a phone went off or something or it just like reminded me of like that creepy tone that, that it had we had bob look it up and i guess he just put the number station thing just right over exactly what jeff played like didn't do anything just like started it from when jeff and started and it ended like right when he ended that has to go on the record for sure never really meant to be a band in the sense of here's some faces to put in front of this music and here's this uh, group of guys that you are supposed to relate to because the way we grew up it was it wasn't like that there wasn't you couldn't just go on Facebook or MySpace or whatever there was you know there was none of that it was just the music and at the end of the day I don't I don't think anything else matters but that you know like if you like the record, if you like the music that comes out of it, the people that made it are basically irrelevant in that sense. Norma Jean is totally a collective to me. I feel like it's, it's what, I mean, we've been carrying it on and on. Like there's been past members and there's been people that have not wanted to do it anymore. And it's just like, this thing needs to keep going. Like it needs to keep, and I feel like we've chosen the right people to have it carry on, and and yeah, we have we have people coming down to collaborate. Like we have Corey's older brother, we have my brother coming down, and it's like we're just trying to get that that Norma Jean sound, and that we're just trying to get that Norma Jean vibe across to people. But in the same way, like evolving the sound. I can look back on it and be proud of everything we've done and everyone that's been a part of it and and love it, you know, to death and see where the change has come and how this person contributed and I, how I believe truly that um, it, was, it isn't by chance that, that that person found something else they wanted to do more and right there waiting is, you know, someone like Philly, you know, who's a really great old friend of ours who just happens to be um, like-minded in, in the sense of music and, and a great guitar player. So, uh, you know, all these people coming in, Jeff and John and, and Goose, um, it wasn't an accident to me. You know, that it was all meant to be for, for Norma Jean to be what we are now.
we definitely went through a lot of emotions writing this record, you know, and some of them were kind of dark, you know, and sad and stuff, so um, I think it kind of came out in some of the riffs and just the feeling of some of these songs, just they're like, not to say any other songs aren't as serious, but I feel like there's just some really powerful stuff coming out of these songs. There's been a lot that has happened over the uh, past few years of being in this band, and I feel like it's shown through the music. This means, like, the most to me out of anything in my life. We make this music for ourselves because we make the music that we want to hear. Um, but we try to find the balance of not necessarily what we know kids are going to like, but we, we just want everyone to love this record as much as we love it. Because we love it. And uh, we're just super proud of it. And we hope it comes across and it doesn't seem like just some thing that we, we did and we're just chasing our tail and we put out a record because we had to. We put out a record because we love it. I feel like it's a, it's a special record for me personally. I mean, it's just going to be a different thing and like I feel like no matter how it goes with the reception of it, I know I'm, I'm happy with it. It's like what, it's the record I had to do. Emotionally, there's definitely that, a lot there. I mean, my son is 10 months old, uh, so being away from him uh, is pretty rough at times. But uh, I know that the end product will be worth it and that, you know, eventually he'll be able to see this and be like, my dad did this, which is really cool. I want him to be as proud of me as I am of him. If somebody can put this record on, like, have their life actually become better by listening to, like, these songs and relating with them and relating with the lyrics and stuff, I, I think that's what I ultimately want, is just to people to identify it and just have a better life because of it. Because I know there's records that, like, I wouldn't be here today if I didn't have them, you know? We're not going to put out something that we don't 100% feel like is exactly what we came here to do. It, it's important to all of us. We, we're all, you know, family dudes, and, it, you know, we've always kind of said to ourselves, you know, if we're going to spend time away from our family and do this, then, I, you know, I better be doing it right every single day all the time. Me away. 